It's a question scientists and sci-fi enthusiasts alike have been pondering since the late 50s. After Hugh Everett proposed his relative state formulation back in 57, and Bryce DeWitt popularized it and called it Many Worlds, folks have wondered what it might be like to enter a universe that is not our own. It's a topic ripe with possibility. If there are other universes, literally anything can be possible. You could meet another version of yourself, or experience different laws of physics. Maybe laser blasters and lightsabers do actually exist where you're headed. So let's break down what it means to travel into a parallel universe, and look at some popular possibilities in pop culture. Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be asking this multifaceted question. What if you traveled into a parallel universe? Before we get going, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more dimensional dreams. Perfect, let's begin. I'll kick off by saying I don't know a whole lot about particle physics or string theory or quantum mechanics. My understanding of these topics is surface level at best, but I'll do my best to introduce some ideas in an easy to understand way. If they interest you, I would really encourage you to head off and do some deeper research and see if you can come up with some interesting conclusions of your very own. The universe is a fascinating place and you are not gonna find all the answers on YouTube. So I suppose the first thing we need to talk about is parallel universes themselves. There are plenty of different ways to interpret the multiverse. The idea itself has been around for ages with theories dating back to the Islamic Golden Age. Of course, the understanding of the idea back then was much different than it is now, but it is interesting to see that people were considering other worlds might be out there. Parallel universes are to exist, we have to believe in some version of the multiverse theory. Thankfully, these ideas are a little easier to explain these days, with pop culture essentially having a monopoly on multiverses. If you've seen a few MCU movies or taken in Spider-Verse, you've got an idea of what a multiverse can mean. Sure, they're simplified to make for engaging storytelling, but it's not as far off and intangible as it once was. The multiverse is a hypothetical group of multiple universes, essentially comprising everything that exists. Each universe is a parallel or alternate or other universe. As of right now though, this is just a theory. There's plenty of debate concerning the existence of multiple universes, with lots of prominent scientists falling on either side of the issue. Technically, it can be argued that the multiverse proposition isn't a theory. For something to be considered a theory, it has to be in some way provable, and at this point in time, nobody can prove the existence of alternate universes. However, it is still a topic of great interest, with multiple different ways to approach it. One idea is that everything is infinite. If our universe is constantly expanding, that means we could never see it all. Without end, it is infinite. If that's true, we have to accept the possibility that in the endless expanse, there are other worlds exactly like ours. Variables being repeated endlessly in different permutations means that the chances of another world literally exactly like ours is small, but there is a chance. And if there is a chance, it's likely to have happened. This also means that there are a whole lot of worlds very similar to ours with small differences. Maybe everyone has ears for eyes and vice versa. Maybe gravity is a little bit lighter. Or humans develop the ability to fly. Who knows? It's all possible, technically. However, making it to one of these other worlds would require some crazy technological advancements to happen. The distance between us and the limits of our observable universe is so insane that we would never be able to reach the limits with current technology. Maybe someone in a more advanced parallel universe will come up with a way to link up and come see us. Until then, we'll just have to chill here, pondering the infinite. Another way parallel universes can crop up comes from a lovely man by the name of Schrodinger. Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? It enjoyed a brief time in the sun back in the era of I Love Science meme pages and Big Bang Theory TV marathons. It's a thought experiment meant to illustrate how every quantum event is a branch point, creating different parallel universes existing simultaneously. Here's how it works. There's a box. It is soundproof and opaque, preventing anyone from observing what's going on inside. In that box is a deadly poison that will only be released if one atom of radioactive substance decays, of which there is a 50-50 chance. Also in the box is a cat. Schrodinger posited that as long as the cat is inside this box, it's neither alive nor dead. It exists in a state of in-between, and there's no way to know for sure the fate of the cat until the box is open and the result is observed. If the multiple worlds interpretation is to be believed, then the cat is both alive and dead upon observation, as there's a parallel universe created in that moment where the opposite happens. 
So for every choice that's made, every chance that has different possible outcomes, there's a branch in our universe that creates another parallel world that exists simultaneously with ours. Now again, there's no way to prove this. We couldn't communicate with any of these other branches even if we wanted to. But how fun would it be to take stock of all the different possibilities? Haven't you always wondered what your life might be like if you said yes to that job, or went to a different school, or if you got a burrito instead of a burger that one time? If we're going to subscribe to this theory, all these answers are out there, but in parallel worlds that we may never be able to contact. The best possible version of yourself might be out there somewhere. The one who made all the right decisions. Or maybe, you're the best version. Stick with that for now. There is one more multiverse idea that we'll discuss today before looking at some pop culture examples. It stems from the theory of cosmic inflation, which posits that at some point our universe expanded very quickly, independent of our own universe. Which posits that at some point, part of our universe expanded very quickly, independent of the rest of the universe. Our universe is like a bubble then. There are other bubbles out there that also expanded very quickly, independent of our universe. And at any time, a new bubble may pop up and expand, creating its own little universe. Kind of like all sorts of individual Big Bangs in their own right. Could we visit these bubbles? Well, we'd have to make it back to before the Big Bang and find out where the bubble is before it expands, so it's not likely. Although, if someone could come up with a portal gun, Rick and Morty style, maybe the walls of the bubbles could be breached. Now, while a lot of the multiverse theories seem to say that we can't visit or contact or prove the existence of other universes, nobody's totally willing to throw the idea out the window. We seem to have found ourselves in a perfectly habitable stretch of universe, and it's hard to imagine how we got so lucky. How did we manage to find such a fantastic Goldilocks-style primordial soup? Not too hot, not too cold, not too hostile, not too lifeless. If infinite different universes are out there, a world like ours can be considered an inevitability. There might be thousands of desolate wastes out there, but we made it. Fun, right? Well, now that we've made it through some of the more theoretical stuff, let's discuss some fantastical possibilities. Let's get back to that first question. What if you traveled into a parallel universe? There are countless books, movies, TV shows, video games, radio programs, and more that have considered this. And because of the implications of the infinite, there are infinite possibilities attached to interuniversal travel. You could subscribe to the Community Remedial Chaos Theory, in which something like, say, rolling a die to decide who gets pizza creates all sorts of timelines. From there you get dark timelines, happy ones, and timelines in between. Those in the darkest of timelines want nothing more than to take down those in the happier ones, and develop technology to cross over. So if you're in that kind of situation, and you're traveling to a parallel universe, you kind of have to assume that you're the bad guy. Staying on that Dan Harmon train of thought, you could also live life like Rick Sanchez. Using his mad scientist brain, he hops between universes to go on harebrained adventures with his grandson. Aliens, hive minds, Cronenbergian creatures, medieval societies, and more await if you opt to take this approach to interdimensional travel. Definitely more exciting than some other options, but infinitely more dangerous. You might end up accidentally ending the world as you know it, and have to take the place of an alternate you a few universes over. A personal favorite universe traveling romp of mine comes in the form of a large green figure opting to relive his glory days. That's right, you could go down the Shrek forever after path and make a deal with the devil of sorts. By agreeing to Rumpelstiltskin's terms, Shrek is transported into a world where the events of the first movie never happened. He never meets Donkey, never saves Fiona, never lives happily ever after. I suppose this is a take on the many branches idea as well, with Shrek taking over for one of his many selves that never went a-questing. And of course, I would be remiss if I left out the big viral parallel news of the past little while. The universe where time flows backwards. Now, it's possible people might have blown the actual discovery out of proportion, but wouldn't it be cool to pop into a dimension where time went backwards for a little bit, you know, take a couple years off, heal some injuries maybe? Well, fun until you de-age into a fetus and cease to exist, I suppose. Not everyone can be like Benjamin Button. Be careful what you wish for, I guess. And with that, I'll wrap up our parallel universe discussion. What kind of parallel universe would you want to visit? Would you be willing to risk the possibility of ending up somewhere unsuitable for life? What's your favorite parallel universe story? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more wrathful ones from What If The Black Plague Happened Again In 2020. Tan Potato says, don't give 2020 ideas. I'm sure whatever 2020 has in store for us is much more insidious than whatever I can come up with. The Futurist Tom says, I've been watching LBQ for years. I like their videos, that's why I decided to create my own sci-fi slash futurist channel. Way to go, Tom. Keep up the good work. 
Odysseus Alpha T says, that's another one for Apocalypse Bingo. I'm getting close to a full card here. What do you think the prize is? Huzaifa Sultan says, at least we are making history, guys. Buck up. That's a fun way to look at it. It'll be interesting to read textbooks in 30 years or so. And SMB85 DKC94 says, what if there were only 1 million people on Earth? Boy, the problems we'd have would be so much smaller, eh? And that's all the time we have for today. Before I crumble to many pieces, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more theoretical themes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.